please welcome George Todd. Very well. Thank you, John. It's my privilege to be asked to introduce this evening's honoree. I'm delighted to be given the opportunity to share with you some of the accomplishments of Mr. Walter Scher, the entrepreneur and businessman, and some of the admirable personal characteristics of Mr. Walter Scher, the philanthropist, and Mr. Walter Scher, the humanist. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about this remarkable man, about how I came to know about him, and about how it was that he decided to become involved with the Center for Discovery. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about his life. Walter was born in Ozone Park, Queens, to a family of very limited means during the Depression era of the 1920s. He was in high school when Pearl Harbor was attacked, and upon his graduation, he and a number of his high school buddies went to the local Army recruiting station to enlist. It was during his physical examination that he was pulled from the line of potential recruits and told by an army physician that they feared that he had active tuberculosis. <clears throat> he was immediately taken to a TB sanitarium on Roosevelt Island and placed in quarantine. Now there were no antibiotics to treat tuberculosis at that time and the treatment really consisted of isolation from society and what was called fresh air treatment, meaning basically the patient slept outdoors on a porch, even in the dead of winter, covered with layers of heavy quilts and blankets. For six years, as a young adult, he was not permitted to leave the sanitarium. He could not have visitors. He could not go home for any holidays. For six years, he was transferred from one institution to another in an effort to cure his tuberculosis. A cure was finally achieved, and he was permitted to leave the sanitarium. Needless to say, it's somewhat difficult to explain a six-year gap in one's resume, and in the late 1940s, there were still no antibiotics yet available to treat tuberculosis, and people were not exactly actively seeking to hire tuberculosis survivors. So Walter found this next phase of his life to be almost as challenging as the previous years, but with his characteristic drive and ambition, he was finally able to secure a job as an entry-level clerk at Sperry Rand and Lytton Industries. Now, Walter moved quickly through the ranks at Sperry. He traveled the world extensively. He established business ventures in numerous European countries, logged more than two million air miles, and ultimately was promoted to a senior executive position with responsibility for more than 30,000 employees. His next venture after Sperry was to draw upon his considerable skills as an entrepreneur, an inventor, a manufacturer, and a business leader, and he established the first publicly traded fax machine company in the United States called Panifax. He subsequently went on to found and develop several other multinational businesses including video library systems, the Share Smith Corporation, and Vico Instruments. Along the way, he found the time to produce a full-length movie entitled, appropriately enough, uh, Whatever It Takes, which he's very proud of. Walter has a deep sense of commitment to others and a strong desire to give back to help those that are less fortunate. He has founded and serves as chairman of three charitable foundations, including the Vera and Walter Scher Family Foundation. He has also shared his extensive experience as well as his enthusiasm for learning by serving as an associate professor of industrial management at several colleges on Long Island. In 2003, 10 years ago, Walter came to me as a patient. He was referred by my brother-in-law, Jack Ryan, who knew Walter from business and had, in fact, succeeded Walter as the chief financial officer of Vico Instruments. Walter had a very serious condition. Accordingly, Walter did some very serious research. He arrived at my office with a four-inch thick binder full of his own readings about his condition. <laughs> it was immediately obvious that Walter had blocked out his entire afternoon for a several-hour discussion about his surgical options. 
He wanted to discuss his expected outcomes with and without surgery. He brought along life table analysis data, an exhaustive list of potential complications, <laughs> multicolored survival curves, <clears throat> and a history of the treatment of his condition dating back to the ancient Babylonians. <laughs> when he ultimately had all his questions answered and I was thoroughly exhausted, he made his decision and at that point he moved ahead without any second thoughts or subsequent discussion. He approached this problem with grace and courage and fortunately he came through it all without any issues. He remains well to this day as we all can see and for which we're very grateful. <laughs> So when all the drama was over and he returned to my office for a post-operative visit, we sat and talked about various things. I mentioned to Walter that I knew of his impressive record of philanthropy. I asked if he would consider helping us with our dual missions at the Medical Center of Research as well as the preparation of the next generation of young physicians and surgeons. Walter listened intently and politely. He then immediately said, no, I can't help you with that. <laughs> needless, to say, <laughs> needless to say, I was a little taken back by that. I mean, like, you know, Walter, come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> dude. <laughs> anyway, he then quickly added, however, that he liked to focus his philanthropic activity in a single area. He said, I really like to direct my philanthropy to programs that can help disabled children and adults. I said, I said perhaps I can help you with that. <laughs> so, that's a true story. It's exactly true. So I introduced Walter to Patrick Dollard in, 19, in uh, 2004 and Walter visited the Center for Discovery. He toured the facilities and the campus, met with the staff and the administrators, and personally visited with and spent time with many of the children for whom the center cares. He quickly embraced the mission of the center. He immediately made a sizable donation to support its good work. He introduced his children, Laura and Bud and Doug and Robert, to the center. They, along with Walter and his wife, Sylvia, have become an extraordinarily supportive and committed family unit working for the benefit of the center. Thank you. <laughs> In partnership with Patrick Dollard and the administration of the Center for Discovery, Walter ultimately decided that the best way to make a lasting impact on the future of the center and to raise it to the new level and raise it to a new level was to invest in the training and education of its employees. And so was founded the Walter and Vera Scher Continuing Education and Scholarship Program in recognition of Walter and his beloved first wife, Vera Scher. The scholarship program is available to any employee to cover the costs of their tuition so that they can obtain a higher education needed to advance their career at the center as well as provide the center with educated, motivated, and highly qualified staff. Since its inception, the scholarship program has achieved the following. More than 87 students have participated in the program. 18 bachelor degrees, 50 master's degrees, and eight doctoral degrees have been completed to date. Degrees have been awarded in the following areas, 23 special education teachers, 11 nursing degrees, 8 physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy degrees, and 7 degrees in executive management and business administration. As impressive as those results are, they do not begin to document the significant impact that his support has had on the individual lives of these employees and their families by providing them with a professional career path enhancing their earning potential and improving the quality of their lives and of their families, not only now but well into the future. <clears throat>